This drone might change the way that I farm forever. And today, I'm seeing if it's worth the investment. So the two drones that I am looking at today for my own personal farm, here we have the DJI T50, which is the option that I'm slightly leaning towards right now. And then over here, we have the XAG P100, which is an option that I'm gonna be learning more about today to see if it's the right fit for me. One reason I am a little bit biased towards the DJI drone, the one we're flying first here, is because the controller is almost the exact same as the DJI drone that I fly to take aerial videos and photos for all the social medias. And I think it's just super easy to run and I'm familiar with their software platform. So I do like this drone controller a lot more just because I'm already familiar with it. So now we're gonna build the map for this little field. We're gonna do a little. So this is all just based on the satellite. Um, you can take the drone out and use the drone. So that would be here, we're using crosshairs. You can even walk out to the field if you want the exact point where you're standing. You can use the controller or the aircraft, but we're just gonna use crosshairs and use a satellite image. So waypoint added. adding waypoints. So this is essentially the outside edge of the field that we're marking, right? Yep. So pre-flight check is kind of what you do before you want to take off. I always check my clamps, make sure those are clamped down. Uh, yep. You don't want to take off without those things locked down. As long as those are good, um, you know, your battery's secure, lid is on. If this flies off, it could break your props. So just make sure oh, that's on. Oh yeah, that one's um, Yeah, other than that, you're pretty much good to go. That thing's loud, <laughs> holy <laughs> smokes. <laughs> Bringing the, the drone down to a closer altitude to where it's actually going to be flying. I can hit start. It's already out in the field. We just I mainly flew it out there, so we didn't hit the hit the shed, shed here. Shed, yeah. Um, hit go. And now it's going to start going on the yep. path that we drew up. Yep. So it's going to turn around right there, go right to its start point, which you can see down in this little window here, mm -hmm. and it's going to start going. There she so, goes. That's not full speed. We'll turn it up here in just a second. So can you scroll the camera when it's going? Like scroll the camera down or just a few different things? Yep. So I just turn it up to full speed. So I can look up, I can look down, and then just straight ahead. So right now it's fully autonomous. If it sensed a obstacle, it would stop. But if I saw it and I wasn't comfortable with how close it was getting, what I could do is I can just pull back on the stick, just like that. Oh yeah. And it's gonna stop. There it's stopped there right the field. here. It stopped. I wanna resume the task, I wanna keep spraying, I'm good to go. Just hit resume. Oh nice, so you can just hit resume, you don't gotta Which, stop or anything. Yep, and you saw it, it went backwards a little bit, so it's gonna go where the spray turned off. Oh, uh, not where not, the drone stopped. Right, exactly. That makes sense. The little work that we got done out there, fake spraying the water out. Now Zane's gonna show us on the phone some of the custom work that he's done that you can see the completed work and the nice map that it makes. So does this show like how many acres, oh, that's the acres and then gallons. So and yeah, so you can click on each flight path even and show um, you know, 3.76 acres done on that flight path. Um, it gives you all time. that data, yeah. Um, and you can get that for the entire field as well. This is the XAG controller and the phone that goes with it. Yep. So a little bit different than DJI, obviously not an all-in-one controller, but similar, very similar process. Uh, you get logged into your, your app on your phone and mapping is very similar. So hit mapping. You're going to have all these same options, oh, obstacles, yeah. sure. no spray zones. No, it's a thing kind of the awkward part of having two uh two controllers, two controllers. And yeah for some reason we weren't able to get the controller to connect to the drone so we started to unplug what they call the brain of this drone so it's just one cable that resets all of the hardware and software and unplug that took about 20 minutes to figure out the issue all right bye <laughs> we're, we're connected now <laughs> took a ready little to, while but ready to fly 20 minutes later yeah we're ready to go bit. 
But All right. uh, yeah, it wasn't necessarily a common issue, but a lot of times you just unplug that brain. Um, after you've gone through all the things and then it goes wrong it'll start working again yeah yep here's what the controller or the phone is seeing for the xag drone you can see there's the camera that's looking at 90 degrees the flight path that we're going to take of this field zane's about to Take everything off autonomously by swiping on the phone. Yep, so you hit start operation, do your checks, make sure everything's unfolded, swipe. Light. It's gonna upload. And at any moment, I can always take over. Again, you could set how high it was above the craft. Yep, so this is 15 feet, same as yep. the, what we did before. Um, Fully autonomous, this is going 30 miles per hour. Just spraying out some water here. Yeah. Now that it's up in the air, um, some differences are the uh, entry point. So you can set an entry, entry point on this one, um, which is really nice. You can essentially put it, if there's something in the way, it's not just gonna beeline it through that. Yeah. So you'll have an entry and exit point. You can barely see the water getting shoot out of those two sprayer nozzles. Oh, I can feel the water. Yep, there it is. Uh, we have a, a pretty large stock of these. Um, right. You know, there's currently, not to scare anyone, but you know, a little bit of an issue getting drones in the country with DJI. Um, so that could affect the uh, availability in the future, depending on what happens. Yeah. So. Is it done or run yep. out? Yep, so it's done. It's gonna come into its entry point. And it's just over here. It's gonna land right where it's gonna land where it took off. Yep, it'll land right where it took off. Well, I was gonna hold off on flying and crashing a drone in today's video and wait until I bought my own drone, but Zane twisted my arm enough, so you're gonna get to see me fly this drone at least a little bit today. <laughs> Take it out, put it out in the field, and then yeah. you can resume the mission that we had going. So it goes straight up. Now resuming the mission we'd started prior with this drone, slide my little slider, and away we go on spraying again. We finished our fake little spraying demo, bringing the drone back. It should land itself autonomously right where we took off. Now I've watched a fair amount of YouTube videos and done my research on these drones. Since I'm gonna be purchasing one next year, let me walk you through my likes and dislikes on each of these drones. On the XAG, I like the bigger tank. This thing holds 13 gallons. I like the double battery. That way, if there's ever a problem with one battery, the other battery takes over. I also like on this drone, it's just built a lot sturdier than the DJI. I like how the nozzles can be adjusted and set at a 45 degree angle. Now the things I don't like, the controller, plus you have to have a specific Android smartphone to go with the controller, that way you can do all the mapping and path planning for the drone. And since I'm, not, I'm an Apple person, can't say I'm overly in love with not being able to just have everything all as one. Also not a huge fan of the camera. It either shoots straight out like this or straight down. Which kind of sucks because if I ever want to go out and do any spot spraying, it's just being able to look at different angles with the camera is gonna make that so much easier to find which spots of the fields I wanna be spraying. So that's kind of my likes and dislikes on the XAG. My likes and dislikes here on the DJI, first of all, absolutely love the user interface. Love that there is a screen on the controller and it's all built in one. Also love the camera on this one. That way I can scroll it up and down. Also like the sensors that they have on these arms. That way I know before I take off that everything's installed correctly. Can't say I'm in love with the smaller 10 and a half gallon tank. I do wish this was a bit bigger. Also with just the one battery on this drone, I'm not a huge fan of the fail safe because if something goes wrong with this battery, which it sounds like it shouldn't happen, but if it ever were to go wrong, I can't say I love the idea that the drone would just fall. Where on the XAG, at least there's two batteries, so if one fails, the other battery can pick up the pace and keep the drone off the ground. Yeah. 
With Zane gone now, I want to talk to you guys about why I am looking for a drone for my personal farm. And the reason is, right now we're paying a co-op about $10, $11 per acre to spray fungicide, insecticide on all of our acres. And for this upcoming growing season, looking to save money, looking to do that by purchasing a drone and applying that chemical by ourselves. So that is one use case. The other is last summer with the big heavy rains that we had, we hired a drone operator to spray down some of our weeds. And I would love to have the opportunity to do that myself. Any weed escapes that we have, I would be able to go out with the drone, spray them down in standing crop with a drone. The investment in the drone is pretty sizable. The two drones we had here today, they're about thirty-five dollars to $45,000, depending on what accessories you want. If you go with that bigger tank on the XAG drone, that's an upgrade. The number of batteries, the charger, the generator, everything that you're going to need. And the reason that I'm starting to you know, have these conversations now in January, rather than July, August, when I'm going to be using the drone, is because I need time to go through all the registration, figure out what I'm gonna need for a trailer, start doing all the back end things to be able to spray come next fall. To spray using a drone on my farm, I need three different test pass. I need number one, the part 107 exam that allows me to operate a drone as part of a business, which a farm is a business, which check, I already have that done since I fly my drone to make YouTube videos. The second one is I need to have my custom applicator's license so I can spray chemicals on a farm. Check, I have that. And the last one is I need a part 137 license, which allows me to basically, since this drone weighs more than 55 pounds, it is allowing me an exemption because it will be used for agricultural use, which I need to get filled out once I get a model and serial number when I purchase a drone. As for which of the two drones I'm gonna get, I do really like that DJI interface. I like the controller much, much more. The XAG drone, I like how many acres it can do per hour. I'm still kinda in a toss up. I still am biased towards the DJI, but Zane was telling me, and I've read online, DJI, their software, their servers are owned by a Chinese company, and there is concern that they are gonna be banned from the United States, so no more parts will be able to come into the States, no more sales will be here in the United States, which is concerning because if I'm gonna spend $40,000 on a drone, and if I need a part, I'm not able to get that part, well now my drone is basically no more than a huge paperweight. So that is one thing I'm factoring in here into my consideration of which of the two drones to purchase. Unfortunately, I am still a little torn on which drone to purchase. There is no one drone that seems like it's completely better than the other one, but I am going to be making a decision here shortly, that way I keep the ball rolling on the certifications, getting the trailer all rigged up like I need. And if you're interested about seeing all of that, the best thing you can do is hit that subscribe button down below. And with that, that's it for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.